Tonight, the death which sparked a global movement. Now the verdict marking a turning point in America's history. A police officer guilty of the murder of George Floyd. Breaking news, a Sydney quarantine hotel at the centre of an urgent COVID alert. Punches, kicks and then a shot fired. War breaks out in a blackened park. From the Blue Mountains to the International Space Station, an out-of-this-world hookup for a group of primary school students. And the huge money deal which lured sharp Chad Townsend to Townsville. This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. There is relief across America tonight. Former police officer Derek Chauvin found guilty of the murder and manslaughter of George Floyd. His brutal death ignited a wave of protests around the world. But today, the streets were filled with tears, hugs and dancing. Outside the Minneapolis courthouse and on the street where George Floyd begged for his life, they gathered, a nation holding its breath. As to count one, unintentional second-degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Relief turned to jubilation and celebration. The jury took just over 10 hours to reach a unanimous decision. All rise for the jury. Former officer Derek Chauvin found guilty of second-degree manslaughter, second-degree murder and third-degree murder. Bail is revoked, bond is discharged and the defendant is remanded to the custody of the Hennepin County Sheriff. George Floyd's extended family watching on from Houston. <laughs> And inside the courthouse, his brother and legal team were overcome with emotion. A bittersweet day for those who never gave up on justice. Today, we are able to breathe again. The verdict prompting a phone call from the president. At least God, now there's some justice and pride. We're all so relieved. Not just the one verdict, all three, truly on all three counts. And we're going to get a lot more done. We're going to get police. We're going to do a lot. Nothing can ever bring their brother, their father back. But this can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. Promising police reform in the name of George Floyd, whose death in May last year sparked a nationwide reckoning, protests not seen since the civil rights movement. Minneapolis was ground zero, furious protesters swarming the police precinct, businesses looted, buildings burned to the ground. Let this be the precedence where we overcome systematic racism and oppression. Today's verdict bringing vindication for a family. Well, we can now tell George's daughter she was right. Her father has began the changing of the world for real. A movement. This is a win for democracy. This is a win for our country. This is a win for us to come together and unite. And a nation. We, we've, been, we've been fighting so much pain and struggle in our city, and now it's time for us to heal. I can't believe it. It feels, there's poetry in the fact that he couldn't breathe, and it feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. Like, for the first time, it feels like we can breathe. As the news spread, the city came to a standstill, united at last in triumph rather than rage. Thousands have come out to celebrate not only justice for George Floyd, but potentially a turning point for a country that has been so divided. From Minneapolis to Washington DC, the festivities caught on. In Atlanta, the next generation rejoiced. He made a change today. It's history. While in LA, they marked the moment in silence. But for Black Lives Matter protesters in New York, the verdict didn't go far enough. And from the country's first black president, cautious optimism. Barack Obama reminding Americans that true justice is about much more than a single verdict in a single trial. True justice requires that we come to terms with the fact black Americans are treated very differently every day. We cannot rest. It is accountability which is the first step towards justice. And now the cause of justice is in your hands. A case with no winners and by no means the end of America's fight against police brutality and racism. And Nine's US correspondent, Alison Petrowski, is in Minneapolis for us tonight. Alison, how long does Derek Chauvin face behind bars? 
Good evening to you, Pete. Potentially up to 40 years behind bars. That sentencing will take place in eight weeks from now. There is a real chance that Derek Chauvin's legal team will appeal. They had suggested throughout the case that the media coverage had tainted the jury's view. So still some legal hurdles to clear, but Pete, a really important first step today. All right, Ali, we'll leave you in Minneapolis. We're going to go to breaking news now. There's an urgent alert tonight for people who stayed in a Sydney quarantine hotel. Let's go live to Damien Ryan in the city. Damien, what can you tell us? Yeah, Pete, for the second time in less than a week, authorities are investigating a potential spread of the COVID-19 in hotel quarantine. There were three people involved in this case. Two are members of the same family. Now, all three flew into Australia on April 3 and stayed in adjacent rooms here on the 10th floor at the McCure Hotel. It's possible now they could have contracted the virus on the plane. Now, it's a South African strain of the virus, the most virulent, which is very concerning. But there is also fear that the transmission may have occurred here at the hotel in quarantine. Now, of course, that's concerning. There were others still on that floor. They've since checked out. The rush now for health officials is to track them down, to get them tested and place them in isolation. And, Pete, in the meantime, there are calls to speed up the vaccine rollout for people most at risk. They're Australia's most vulnerable and in a pandemic at the front of the queue in the vaccine rollout. But those like 69-year-old Jan have been forgotten. Does it make you angry you haven't been vaccinated? <laughs> we don't know um, how we're going to get the vaccine, where it's going to come from. Australia's more than 6,000 disability homes were to be among the first to receive the vaccinations under Phase 1A of the plan. We've done only a very small number of those, only about a num 100 of them. The opposition's disability spokesman, Bill Shorten, today visited one of those centres still on the waiting list. Morrison government's neglect of people with disabilities is unforgivable. The vaccination and a subsequent blood clot suffered by a frontline policeman in Queensland has prompted an investigation. The 40-year-old officer received the Pfizer jab last week, days after undergoing knee surgery. It's believed the clot was linked to the operation and not the jab. Clearly our, our authorities will be looking into whether there is a link. And while it may not help speed up our sluggish rollout, the Victorian government has entered into the vaccine making business. Committing $50 million to establish a facility to make the Pfizer and Moderna style vaccines. But the plant will require backing from Canberra and patients. It will take at least 12 months. And while the New South Wales government dithers over setting up mass vaccination centres, Victoria is up and running. The state's first three super clinics open today. People over 70 able to walk in off the street. AstraZeneca, man. But it wasn't the rush they'd hoped for. Dozens, not hundreds, lining up for a jab of AstraZeneca, including Victoria's chief health officer. The mass vaccination centres have the capability of administering up to 60,000 doses a week. Damien Ryan, Nine News. And just into the newsroom, the exploding COVID outbreak in India is having potential implications here. Let's go live to Jonathan Kersley, who's in Cam uh, Melbourne for us tonight. Jono, you have more information on this. Yeah, Peter, health authorities right across Australia are seeing a surge in cases in hotel quarantine of people who have travelled in from the subcontinent. In India alone in the last 24 hours, there's been in excess of 250,000 cases and more than 1,700 deaths. I understand tonight that the AHPPC is going to be providing national cabinet with urgent medical advice about the situation in India. Then a decision will be made on whether to leave incoming flights as they are for stranded Australians trying to get home or suspend them until the problem is a bit clearer. All right, Jono, thank you. Police are investigating whether warring rap groups are behind a shooting in Western Sydney. The video being circulated on social media shows two men fighting at a park in Blackett before a weapon is drawn. It was a single shot with a clear target. Watch as a man dressed in black with a gun in his right hand leans down to collect a magazine or ammunition with his left. He then extends his arm and fires. 
It's one round and it's unknown if he hit his mark. Police say there have been no relevant admissions at local hospitals. But what we do know is that minutes earlier, Poppendetta Park in Blackett was a scene reminiscent of Fight Club. Two men, a dozen or so onlookers, and all the hallmarks of a pre-arranged punch-up. But it's when a second fight breaks out. That chaos reigns. The fight, thought to have occurred in February, is only doing the rounds on social media now, with police examining whether rival rap groups are involved. Oh, that's pretty shocking. In one thing to fight and then the next thing to have a weapon. Nine News can reveal it's videos such as this which have prompted police to establish a new task force. Juventus was established just on Monday and its target is warring youths. Ellie Walsh, Nine News. More charges have been laid against a Campbelltown man accused of sexual violence against women and girls, with 14 new alleged victims coming forward to police. 24-year-old Anthony Glumack is now facing a total of 47 charges in relation to 19 women and girls aged between 14 and 28. The incident allegedly occurred in Darlinghurst, Wollongong and across southwestern Sydney. He will remain behind bars until he faces court again on June 30. A 31-year-old food delivery driver has been charged after a man was stabbed outside a Chatswood home late last night. Emergency crews responded to calls on Archer Street where they found a 29-year-old with a wound to his leg. Police say the men were known to each other. A giant coal mine planned on prime farming land in the state's northwest will not go ahead after the state government paid the Chinese owners to walk away. Millions of dollars will also be put aside to help mining communities as the state transitions away from coal. According to the New South Wales government, coal is good, but a coal mine near Tamworth is bad. I will continue to rule out parts of the state in relation to coal mining, but there are parts of the state there it's appropriate. A Chinese government company was a breath away from being allowed to build an open-cut coal mine on the Liverpool Plains, but the Deputy Premier has said no, spending $100 million to buy the licence out. It's a great relief for all of us today for this to, to, to happen. The mine in Breeza, southeast of Gunnedah, was supposed to extract 10 million tonnes of coal a year over 30 years. Its size, compared here to Sydney, saw farmers hit the roof in protest. And after 12 years, the government has put a stop to it. We will now extinguish the, the mining licence forever and a day. Local farmers thrilled their fight is finally over. It's a bit of clarity and you know for our future that we're going to be safe and we can continue farming. But coal exploration has been greenlit in Walla near Mudgee while open cut mining at Dartbrook near Musselbrook is off. An impossible task to strike balance in the midst of a by-election in the Hunter Valley. Today's announcement is not a handout to mining communities, it's a handshake for the great work that they do in driving the New South Wales economy. The government is also throwing $25 million a year into a bank account to be used by mining communities. An admission the industry is heading for extinction, albeit a slow one. We actually need money now. We need to make sure that this area receives what it deserves and it has funding now to create jobs. Chris O'Keefe, Nine News. A woman accused of murdering her mother in a Southern Highlands aged care home has denied she euthanised her in a desperate act to end her pain. Barbara Eckersley says she felt like she was out of her body when she gave the renowned scientist a drug known as Green Dream, but says she only wanted to make her more comfortable. Barbara Eckersley's voice was steady, but at times tinged with emotion. As she was questioned about the evening she fed her 92-year-old mother a bowl of soup containing the drug Green Dream. I didn't think it through. I was very agitated. I was out of body. My only concern was to help my mother. I was not thinking about killing her. Her mother's condition deteriorated and Eckersley says she was so overwhelmed and panicked she forgot about the drug, only remembering days later. 
That's just a lie, isn't it? The Crown put to her. No, it's not, she replied. Eckersley denied she first tried to take her mother's life a day earlier when she gave her crushed up to Mazapan. The Crown put to her that she wasn't coping with her own decision to move her mother away to the north coast. Eckersley arranged the transfer from her Bundanoon facility, unhappy with the treatment she was receiving. A battle with medical staff over pain management, which Eckersley said left her with a major depression. Eckersley also told the court she and her husband were misunderstood by staff in the lead up. They got the impression we were asking about terminal sedation, which we weren't. We had not discussed euthanasia in regards to Mary at all. Kelly Fedor. Nine News. People in Janali woke up this morning to the sound of sirens, this fire appearing as though it was engulfing an entire apartment block in Railway Crescent. In the end, it was contained to one top floor unit. The man inside treated for smoke inhalation. The blaze forcing dozens of people to be evacuated. What caused it isn't known at this stage. The Eels say a high-profile star is the victim of an invasion of privacy after video emerged of him having sex with a young woman in a public toilet. The Eels arrived in Darwin for Friday's clash with the Broncos just as the story broke, but say it won't be a distraction. The club will work through it and, and whatever they, they think so to whatever happens, it happens. So uh, we're, we're here to play footy and that's our full focus this week. The NRL Integrity Unit is investigating. A senior Chinese official says Australia behaved illegally and immorally when it banned Huawei from the rollout of next generation wireless. It comes as the foreign minister pledges to stand firm against digital dictators. Australia is living in dangerous times. If we don't actively shape our future, others will most certainly try and shape it for us. The Foreign Minister warns that authoritarian regimes pose threats to our freedom in the real and virtual worlds. We'll remain a firm bulwark against the rising tide of digital authoritarianism. The stand against one tech giant, Huawei, outraged our major trading partner. Australia connived with the United States in a very unethical, illegal, immoral suppression of Chinese companies. The Chinese envoy says the ban on Huawei and a long list of other grievances justified Chinese sanctions on Australian goods. We have done nothing intentionally to hurt this relationship. And although she did not name China, the foreign minister is unbowed. We will deter and respond to those who threaten our sovereignty our values, our interests, and who undermine peace and stability. The Foreign Minister's off to New Zealand, where she may well quietly question the Kiwis' reluctance to join their allies in a five-nation intelligence-sharing partnership in publicly calling out China's bad behaviour. We are uncomfortable with expending the remit of the Five Eyes. Which has some wondering whether the Intelligence Alliance could get by with one less eye. Chris Yulman, Nine News. Days out from a global climate summit hosted by US President Joe Biden, Scott Morrison has flagged a $540 million green investment in hydrogen and carbon capture and storage. You want to deal with global emissions, then you need technology that's commercial and that developing nations around the world will adopt. Former senior defence personnel have added their voice to the push for the government to do more to tackle climate change. Shouting, foul language and often terrifying violence. Next, the stark reality of rage on our roads. Also, two years after families were forced to flee without notice, cameras go back inside the crumbling mascot towers for the first time. Healing arthritis with stem cells, one of the biggest trials in the world, kicks off in Sydney. And the Blue Mountains primary school students who have a direct line to space. Frozen adventure comes. Let it snow. Let it snow. To Lego Live. Each team will be given their own snow globe. It's storytelling perfected. Who will take imagination? I think this is going to be one of the best things that we've ever built. It really is beautiful Lego. Into the unknown. We've got some real good builds out here. It's making me happy. 
And who will be the first? No pressure! To let it go. I do have to send one team home. And say goodbye. Lego Masters, tonight, 7.30 on 9. At Coles, there's hundreds of prices down and counting, so you can lower the cost of your weekly shop. The price of breakfast is down, with Coles Toasted Original Style Muesli down down to $3.10. Coles. Value the Australian way. Congratulations. When are you, uh... Excuse me? Oh, uh, we, we were... He's... <laughs> Kidding. It's just the savings I pocketed getting my health insurance from HBF. All See right. if you can pocket the savings with HBF. Join today. The countdown is on to the USA Power Lotto, worth over $100 million. But hurry, it's about to go off. Draw closes 10 a.m. Thursday. Get your ticket today at lotteryoffice.com.au. Maybe we could find ways to call time out on our kids' busy routines before they get sick. But if they do, Children's Panadol can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. Together, let's rethink care. All ready to go. Mate. Cole's car insurance is full of nice surprises. Like the fact that last year we paid out 99% of car claims. So you can get back to what really counts. Coles. Value the Australian way. Discover a new level of luxury at the King Living Sale. Save up to 50% on the best in Australian furniture design. Why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King? Sale ends soon. Nine News, brought to you by the King Living Sale. End soon. If you drive a car, you know there are some angry people on our roads. And tonight, we're getting a clearer picture of just how many there are. The NRMA has revealed 70% of drivers across the state have been victims of road rage, often while they have children in the car. Try my indicator on. Anger. You're trying to kill someone, you Abuse. <laughs> Even assault. It's the frightening reality on our roads. What can begin as a simple mistake, someone cutting you off, uh, can very quickly spiral out of control. According to NRMA data, one in eight drivers have witnessed dangerous behaviour in the past year, including tailgating, shouting abuse and physical assault, while seven out of ten motorists say they've experienced road rage firsthand. In the moment, they forget that there are dash cams and there are pedestrians with smartphones. Andrew Nurlich was hospitalised in 2018 after being punched in the head 15 times by another motorist following a minor collision in French's forest. His 20-year-old attacker sentenced to 18 months jail. People should be able to go about their business safely. Accidents happen, everybody makes mistakes. There's no denying the statistics are alarming, but perhaps what's more concerning is that one in four motorists said they'd experienced road rage with a child sitting in the back seat. Kids are picking up on everything you're saying and doing whilst you're driving a vehicle, so it's important that whether you're the victim or the offender, that you alter that behaviour and we set the right example for, uh, for our young learners. With the uncertainty of the past year, everyone is feeling the pressure. But we all need to be more tolerant on our roads and if you find yourself in a tense situation, the humble wave goes a long way. It's a simple wave, right? It's a simple wave. Kate Creedon, Nine News. For the first time, cameras have been allowed inside Sydney's crumbling mascot towers. Two years after it was suddenly evacuated, when cracks appeared in the basement. 132 families were forced to flee, and tonight you'll see what was left behind. Furniture, fridges full of food, apartments beyond repair. A current affair has been given an exclusive tour of the ghost tower, as devastated owners speak up about facing financial ruin. 
the repair bill now reaching $64 million. That story coming up right after the news. A black teenager has been shot dead by police in Ohio just moments before the conviction of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Body cam footage shows 15-year-old Nakia Bryant in a scuffle with other females. Armed with a knife, she pushes one person to the ground and then attempts to stab another when an officer opens fire. Protesters have gathered at the site and the local police station chanting, Say Her Name. The boss of Tesla has hit back after a fatal crash involving one of his vehicles. Two people died when their Tesla crashed into a tree in Texas. Both were in passenger seats. Their friends insist they were testing the car's self-drive feature. But Elon Musk says data logs show the car was not on autopilot and didn't have full self-driving software anyway. Queen Elizabeth is now 95 years old, but today's milestone is likely to be a sombre affair in the wake of husband Prince Philip's death. Gun salutes at the Tower of London or Hyde Park are unlikely, as is a new official photo. The royal family's official mourning period will end on Friday. He looks like he doesn't have a care in the world, but the pressure is mounting on former MP John Sadoti as he's told to listen and answer the questions at his corruption hearing. The apology note found on the beak of a stolen Big Bird costume. Why thieves say they nicked it. Lost your keys? Well, there's an app for that. Next, Apple tempts us with new features. And, and the biggest gathering in the grass for the over 65s, the New South Wales Seniors Festival, underway at Darling Harbour. A brazen act. Who stole this beloved family mocking? Very disturbing. Its heartbroken owners say this bloke's a catnapper. And it was all caught on camera. Now the search to find the feline and this man. It's incredibly confronting to see a cat taken. A current affair next. Ever since I've retired from basketball, I've never been busier. You say bet? Mm -hmm. It's a lot you can do in a few seconds. Even with just one hand. I never miss having a bet on Friday night footy. Sunday football. Ten legs, same game, multi. Glory, glory to Saturday. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Good night, ladies. It's Shaq and Yeezy to bet anytime, anywhere with the points bet app. Climb a tower and be a princess and get shot at with arrows. Wizards throwing spell packets. It's an amazing feeling. It's euphoric. There are so many ways we can live better. Search Medibank Live Better to find yours. Get your Woolies worth with Delivery Unlimited. Sign up today and get unlimited deliveries and a free 30-day trial. That's why I pick Woolies. Being an Oz Club member means you go in the draw to our Friday freebies. Prizes include car awnings, petrol vouchers, kayaks, fishing gear, iPads, new iPhones, gaming consoles and much, much more. Jump onto ozcar.com.au. Join the club. Membership's free. When heartburn hits, take Gaviscon Dual Action's double layer tablet. It works fast to neutralise stomach acid and form a protective barrier that blocks acid reflux. Try Gaviscon Dual Action, now in new mixed berry tablets. Flavour you can munch, munch. flavour you can crunch, crunch. flavour just for me, yeah. flavour you can see. Shapes, new shapes, mini bites, light crunch, big flavour! There's a lot you can do in just a couple of seconds. Even with just one hand. Just load it up on the bunnies tonight. And she's gonna purr like a kitten. Glory, glory to South Sydney. Points bet, it's shacking easy. Even if you haven't seen oh, no. their story so far. I don't think I can forgive you. The incredible season final will blow your mind. I've got thick skin. The truth. I made a dreadful mistake. They've kept in the dark. I'm pregnant. Shit. Will decide how it all ends. We've got something really wonderful here. I don't want it to end. 
Amazing Grace, tonight on Nine. Former Liberal Minister John Sadoti has copped a scathing dressing down from the anti-corruption chief as he continues his defence. The MP denies trying to influence local councillors to make development decisions which would have helped his family. Fronting up for day two in the ICAC witness box, by now John Sadoti knows the drill. I, I don't recall. Maybe you can show me something. What they had were emails from him to local Liberal councillors seeking meetings and lobbying for changes to redevelopment plans for the Five Dock Town Centre where his parents own property. ICAC investigating whether the former minister used his position to influence the way they voted. Do you accept that when you sent this email you did so in your capacity as the uh, member for Dremoyne? Yes. As for what he wrote, he consistently backtracked on his language. Just wrong, wrong selection of words. Again. Oh, again. It was a very persuasive statement to get them to fall into line with what your views were. No. Not at all. Not persuasion? Not at all. Not influence? Not at all. Mr Sidoti says he was representing the views of local shopkeepers, but he didn't tell councillors his own family also stood to benefit from the changes he was advocating. By this afternoon, the Commissioner's patience was wearing thin. You are here to attend to questions put. Will you assist this Commission by doing that? Yes. Good. Do you think that the ICAT Commissioner was uh, fair when he was seemed quite frustrated with you today? Oh, I've got no comment to make, um, at least at this point. Liz Daniels, Nine News. A small win tonight for our frontline staff who faced a battle just getting to work every day. Concord Hospital workers will be granted permits, allowing them to park on the street without any time restrictions. Canada Bay Council is also extending free parking at Lovedale Place, making it easier for workers to drive. Our members have struggled on, on public transport during the pandemic, particularly when they've been wearing uniforms. They've found that, you know, they've been abused. Council is also calling on the state government to speed up construction of a car park across the road. The Prime Minister will hold talks with alleged rape victim Brittany Higgins next week. Ms Higgins wrote to Scott Morrison's Chief of Staff outlining her priorities, including setting up an independent complaints body for staff. The Prime Minister says he's looking forward to the meeting, describing it as important. Well, he's seven feet tall and bright yellow, but for 48 hours, Big Bird was nowhere to be seen in Adelaide. This morning, the Sesame Street character finally showed up with a bizarre note in his beak. A big bird with an even bigger story. <laughs> Glad you're back. Back from a feathered fright. The $160,000 suit bird napped, found slumped against a power box. Tie on, eyes open. This police inspection blending Sesame Street with SVU. But I suppose we're still in a bit of shock that we've actually got him back and everything. The self-titled Big Bird Bandits leaving an apology note in the beak. We had no idea what we were doing or what our actions would cause, they wrote. Sorry for being a big bird. A local had seen two gentlemen running with the costume. They apologised because they were having a hard time and they just out to have a bit of fun and everything and sorry they caused so many problems. He said the world's full of different birds with different points of view. The world's most famous feathered friend had left his nest for a travelling circus, where he was back today in Adelaide chasing the clouds away. A costume like this can't be made, they're not just sitting on the shelf, you know, you're talking nearly three months to make a costume like this. A waddle, a wave, and once more, the air was sweet. Thank you for not harming Big Bird and bringing him back. Charles Croucher, Nine News. It's been party time today for Sydney Seniors, day one of a two-day expo with free entertainment, games and giveaways, plus all-important lifestyle advice. It's like splendour in the grass, but without grass or young people. The New South Wales Seniors Festival underway in Darling Harbour today, with the dulcet tones of 60s Motown from Human Nature. <laughs> And alongside the Seniors Expo, with all the latest in living longer. 
I think in every senior's mind, you're still 39 in your head all the time. Travel is back front of mind. A lot of people asking us about New Zealand, now open, obviously very exciting since Monday. As are gyms and sport. They're living longer and they want to live healthier. But as the festival broadcasted on the interweb, there were some downs with the ups, like the increase in elder abuse during COVID. People were more isolated and had less connection with their communities and different support networks. The most popular stand undoubtedly, the seniors card. We've got about 7,500 business partners that are offering discounts to seniors across the states. Any chockey in the bag? No chockey in the bag. Mate! Although I did take a fancy to the latest cutting edge in electric scooter development. It's the fastest, it's the most stylish and it has a, an omni wheel so you can turn it around within 76 centimetres. Hey mate, want a drag? Yeah, I'll give you a drag. Hey, see ya, sucker! And back of house, stage door Johnny's Margaret Connolly and Janice Stapleton were meeting up with human nature, with plans to kick on after. We are partying on tonight. I love your style! <laughs> Mike Dalton, Nine News. It's official, Chad Townsend is leaving the Sharks and heading to Townsville, but Cam... There is a twist. Yes, Pete, there's a financial plot twist to this one. It shows that it is a halfbacks market out there because Chad has been reported as getting $2 million over three years. Tonight, we can tell you they're paying him much more than that. Danny Widler has the details. And the game is too quick. Retiring Dragon Trent Merrin declares the NRL is fast becoming no place for old men. Tomorrow we have the absolute latest on the vaccination rollout for you. Plus, we reveal the suburbs in your city where it's cheaper to buy than rent. And putting plant-based burgers to the test, no. they're healthier, but would you really eat one? I don't know. That's tomorrow. Rebel believes sport can transform lives. And so can winning $20,000. Sport's a stress reliever and a problem solver. It keeps us connected to ourselves and our communities. It's the me time I need. It means something different to all of us. And it means more to the people of Australia. Go online and tell Rebel what sport means to you for your chance to win $20,000. Enter now for your chance to win. Rebel, sport is calling. Being back at school can be very different for the one in six Australian children living in poverty. Please sponsor an Australian child and give them the extra learning support to catch up, keep up and flourish. Search the Smith family. Not a fan of Domino's? Pretend you never saw this ad. Look away now. Forget the gourmet ingredients and the farm fresh flavours. But most importantly, don't even think about Domino's new super premium pizzas. From just $15 delivered, they couldn't be this good. Or could they? Domino's, bring it in. We're looking for a local bar. Something a little quirky. Maybe on a roof. Oh, and there's also... That should do us. Join any NIB combined hospital and extras cover online and we'll waive the two and six month wait on extras. Plus, join by April 30 and get up to $300 off your policy. Join NIB today. It's worth it. At Coles, there's hundreds of prices down and counting so you can lower the cost of your weekly shop. The price of breakfast is down with Coles Orange Juice 2 litres down down to $5. Coles, value the Australian way. Can the perfect Panthers make it seven straight wins? My goodness! Or will the Knights put them to the sword? 
Thursday on Nine. This sports report brought to you by Sportsbet's Elite Average Games. Download the app today and make it look easy with Sportsbet. In the end, Chad Townsend couldn't say no. The Cowboys threw so much money at him, it blew Cronulla out of the race. So the Sharks halfback made the emotional decision to put his family's financial security first. On another day, Andrew Fafita's purple locks would be worth further explanation. But today was all about Chad. His teammates are sure to start calling him Chad Townsville, and they're all sad to see him go. Sean Johnson wasn't into the handshake. He sent him off in another way. For Townsend, it was tough breaking the news to his best mates. It was a tough decision, you know, to leave this club, and um, it was extremely difficult this morning to tell the playing group, and uh, I got a little bit emotional, but... Um, you know, I'm happy that it's it's out of the way. When I think about it, um, you know, it was a tough decision, you know. Like, I love the club and, you know, I've made a lot of good memories here and uh, got a lot of good mates here as well. Townsend told incoming coach Craig Fitzgibbon of his plan late yesterday. He wanted Townsend to stay. It was really appreciative to me, Fitz. He, uh, you know, appreciated my, my honesty and uh, said to me that he would have loved to have coached me and that, that I was a part of the plans for next season. Today I went and saw him face to face and I told him my decision which was again which was you know difficult and uh, but again he appreciated the fact that I was able to go and have that conversation with him face to face and you know you, you grow as a person from having those tough conversations. But Nine News understands he had to leave. The Cowboys offer is 2.4 million dollars over three years. I've got three beautiful young children now who uh, rely on me and my, and my wife and this decision uh, has been for them and the security of them and to really provide us with a, with a good future. Danny Widler, Nine News. Coach Anthony Griffin calls it one of the most selfless acts he's seen in rugby league. Trent Merrin quitting the Dragons mid-season because the honest truth is his body can't keep up with modern rugby league. Trent Merrin content with just being a spectator at Dragons training from now on. The 31-year-old calling time on his career six rounds into the season. The game's sort of drifting away from myself and I've got to be honest with it and... Um, I'll call it before it calls me. Merrin played 250 first grade games, winning a premiership, as well as representing his state and country. I just know that what standard I have for myself and I'd be lying to myself if I just plodded along and got paid for, for a potential that I, I couldn't maintain. And I think it's the most, one of the most selfless things I've seen a player do. Merrin worries more players his age will be forced into retirement as they struggle to adapt to a faster game. I think it... It helps the, the younger playing group coming, there, coming through these days. They, they train for it, they prepare for it, they play for it. It's, it's not new to them. Despite being named on an extended bench, Ben Hunt appears unlikely to return from a broken leg against the Roosters on Sunday. The skipper is still training away from the main Dragons squad. Victor Radley has been given the thumbs up to play in the Anzac Day blockbuster. His high tackle charge downgraded at the judiciary. In a busy night at League Central, others weren't so lucky. Latrell Mitchell suspended for four weeks and Paul Momorowski three, both failing in their downgrade attempts. Coaches are confused and believe it could be time to review the grading system. There's been a few incidents lately that have people scratching their heads a bit. Luke Duffersey, Nine News. The Giants will be looking for their third straight win when they face arch-rivals Western Bulldogs on Friday. Coach Leon Cameron says GWS needs to learn from the last time the sides met when his team gave up 26 free kicks in a fiery clash. We probably went a little bit too far last year um, and clearly they, were, they played a really good brand of footy last year when they beat us down at Marvel. So, um, you know, we've got to focus on the ball. We've got to focus on the man with the footy. Lockie Whitfield is an outside chance of playing his first game of the year after recovering from a bruised liver. One of Australian motorsport's biggest names will come out of retirement to race a supercar when he returns to the Bathurst 1000. The series champion of 2005, Russell Ingall, will drive alongside 18-year-old rookie Brock Feeney in what will be the oldest, youngest combination in Bathurst history. It's back in the gym. Julie and my wife's very happy about it because she reckons I'm going to look a lot better in six months' time when it comes into October. So we've got one fan already. Uh, but, yeah, look, um, I've got no reservations about myself as far as performing on the track.
Shane Van Gisbergen leads Jamie Winkup by 139 points. The series heads to South Australia's Tail and Bend in a fortnight. The power of the humble soccer fan has defeated the richest and most influential figures in European football, with the proposed Super League crumbling just two days after it was first floated. Manchester City and Chelsea were the first clubs to pull their support, and within hours all six Premier League clubs had pulled the pin. Super League officials then announced the project was on hold, although they still claim the breakaway competition should have a place in the football landscape. And tonight, some news about South legend George Pickens. He was rushed to hospital with a fairly serious infection, but he's in a stable condition tonight, Pete. So we wish him well, we the Pickens family. Thank you, Cam. In the news ahead, is this the holy grail for knee pain using stem cells to heal arthritis? 11 minutes they'll never forget to Blue Mountain School hooked up to the International Space Station. And Kmart's quirky new staff member you'll notice in the aisles. Peak hour on one of Sydney's busiest motorways. Then this happens. See the full story on Nine News tomorrow. It's the music event that brings the entire nation together. He's a working class man. The biggest names in Aussie music. Oh, you got it all on me now. Join forces this Anzac Day Eve. Don't be it's over. To celebrate the unbreakable Aussie Don't spirit. Music from the home front. Yeah. Saturday, 7.30 on 9 and 9 now. Introducing free MasterChef cookware from Coles. They look impressive. Let's put them to the test. For every $20 you spend in one transaction, scan your Flybys card to earn one MasterChef cookware credit. Non-stick, how good is that? Super durable. Perfect for a sauce as well. Plus, get a bonus cookware credit when you purchase selected products from these participating brands. Collect all seven MasterChef cookware pieces. That's the way to cook like a MasterChef. Free MasterChef cookware from Coles. Value the Australian way. Aaron thinks it's Treat Yourself Tuesday. But it's actually debit day for his water bill. If only he'd used BPay to schedule bills for after he gets paid. Make bills work for you. Switch to BPay. We're in your corner. Oh, you got a bit of dirt on your neck, dear. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. change starts with questioning something. Wondering, what if? Someone ducks instead of weaves, goes left instead of right, says no instead of nothing. Before you know it, that decision to change something changes everything. For good. Good change moves us forward, giving us more choice, more purpose, more hope. All we have to do is start. Origin, where all good change starts. At Coles, there's hundreds of prices down and counting, so you can lower the cost of your weekly shop. The price of dinner is down. With Coles Tasmanian Salmon with Garlic and Herb Crumb 2-pack, down down to $11. Coles. Value the Australian way. No small SUV packs more features in than the Ford Puma to help you fit more into your life. And right now, your Ford dealer has a finance offer to also fit your life. Get a new Puma from just $125 a week with a deposit of only 10% and no balloon payment. So you can drive away in style with a great rate and no surprises at the end. Hurry into your Ford dealer before June 30. Hundreds of patients with worn out knees are being recruited for one of the biggest trials in the world. 
The University of Sydney study is investigating whether stem cell therapy is as good as we're led to believe for osteoarthritis. This is part of Tom Buttle's monthly routine, a tailored exercise program to manage the pain in his right knee. There's been ongoing pain, so the pain fluctuates daily, weekly. The problem began when the 61-year-old suffered a rugby injury in his teens. I was playing 5'8 and I was tackled sideways and my knee just gave way sideways. Osteoarthritis is an underlying destruction of the joint tissues. Exercise and losing weight can help relieve symptoms. Stem cells, on the other hand, isn't recommended because there's not enough good evidence. There's a lot of talk, there's a lot of enthusiasm from the community, but there's no good regular evidence to suggest that they are effective in this context. But this new therapy could change that. The trial involving 440 patients is one of the largest that will compare stem cell injections to a control group using saline. It's hoped the active ingredient can reduce inflammation within the joint. The primary outcomes for this trial are pain, which is the predominant symptom people complain of, and structure. Most trials to date have used the patient's own stem cells extracted from their fat tissue. This therapy is a consistent off-the-shelf product. It harvests stem cells derived from the the blood of a healthy young donor. They're then expanded and manufactured. If there's any benefit, investigators will also measure how long the treatment will last, which is why the trial will run for two years. It's quite an expensive uh, procedure, so I think the, the science needs to be behind it. It either works or it doesn't. Details on the Sculptor study are on the University of Sydney website. Gabriella Rogers, Nine News. If you look to the sky in just the right place at just the right time last night, you may have caught a glimpse of the International Space Station, brighter than usual as it passed over Australia. A bunch of aspiring astronauts in the Blue Mountains did one better, making direct radio contact with the NASA crew on board. First contact. Sir, Romeo 4, ISS has you loud and clear. How are you all doing down there this morning? A pumped Mrs B, the science teacher, and a jam-packed school hall at Winmalee Primary, 430 kilometres up to the International Space Station for a Q&A with NASA astronaut Victor Glover. Hi, my name is Erin and my question is, what is the best way to describe the feeling of microgravity? Over. I would say it is like dreaming about flying. Eight students lined up, questions ready, hooked up to the International Space Station through Jan. He's operating amateur radio in Antwerp, Belgium. What happens is space junk hits the International Space Station. How many times a year do you get supplies delivered to the ISS? What personal items would you take into space if allowed and why? Over. And I brought pictures of my family. That was probably the most important thing. What do you do up there for fun? Over. Indiana, we uh, watch movies, we call friends and family on Earth, read books, I like to exercise, I think that's fun. And from Mrs B, any advice on becoming an astronaut? Be, be resilient, don't stop in the face of challenges. And number two, be a lifelong learner, learning inside and outside of the classroom. And the last thing, number three, is to be a good teammate. And you'll achieve success no matter what your dreams are. And also, always listen to Mrs B. Listen to your teachers. <laughs> In the end, the kids at Winmalee had 11 minutes in contact with the crew on board the International Space Station before she dipped over the horizon and the radio signal was lost. You don't always get to talk to an astronaut and you've got to be really lucky to do it. Lizzie Pearl, Nine News. Tech giant Apple has targeted the more forgetful people in their latest product launch, introducing air tags to help track personal belongings on your smartphone. From keys to backpacks and even luggage, the Bluetooth device pinpoints the lost object and guides you to its destination. They'll be available at the end of the month. It's called Tory and it's coming to a Kmart near you. The retailer has revealed plans to deploy a robot in every Australian store within the year to help with stock taking. It's able to roam the floor checking where stock is and how much of it is left. Robots are a regular sight in US stores, cleaning up spills and checking for hazards. All right, still to come in Nine News, Amber with the weather.
A brazen act. Who stole this beloved family mocking? Very disturbing. Its heartbroken owners say this bloke's a catnapper. And it was all caught on camera. Now the search to find the feline and this man. It's incredibly confronting to see a cat taken. A current affair next. At Terry White Chem Mart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chem Mart. Now that's real chemistry. An outdoor area is somewhere you would like to be able to hang out all year round. So if you've got it all set up, you might have your deck and everything ready to go. You could get your outdoor heating and your outdoor lights and it would be perfect. So the outdoor lights will make it more welcoming. An outdoor gas heater can keep everyone warm sitting around the table. If you love the feeling of sitting around an open fire under the stars, a fire pit is the way to go. And it will make it a place you can enjoy all year round. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item will beat it by 10%. Shop at Bunnings wherever you are, whenever you want. Flavor unexplored. Discover new vanilla caramel brownie from Connoisseur. Great car wash, boys. Oh, but uh, last time. It's for the club. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> fellas, it's it's like when I get my Toyota service. It's just one low price. Doesn't change for five years. I'm still feeling it. Nothing spoils that Toyota value feeling, and you can book your cat price service through the My Toyota app. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. And then we're going to a day spa. Very nice. And you haven't even asked for any money lately, kiddo. <laughs> All good money bags. The Combank app does on my budgety stuff now. Keeps me on track. Sounds like an app vantage. <laughs> yeah, very app vantage. <laughs> App Vantage Us. <laughs> oh, I can't deal. <laughs> the app that tracks, budgets and predicts. That's an App Vantage. Experience a wander out yonder in WA. Want acres of wilderness to explore? Save up to $150 when you spend three nights in the East Kimberley from just $429. Book now with free date changes. Get your Woolies worth with prices dropped on champagne leg ham. Sliced or shaved from the deli, dropped to just $19 a kilo. That's why I pick Woolies. Discover a new level of luxury at the King Living Sale. Save up to 50% on the best in Australian furniture design. Why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King? Sale ends soon. For all Australian parents, the most important, eye-opening, 60 minutes you could ever see. It is tipping Australia upside down. Our kids' lives, boys and girls. This is not solely an issue of protecting women, but an issue of educating men. Are at stake. It's a right that young people have access to this information. Unmissable and unforgettable. 60 minutes. After a southerly move through overnight, Sydney woke up to a beautiful but very brisk morning. The gorgeous sunshine helping to warm things up a little out of the wind. Temperatures reaching 21 degrees in the west, which is 4 degrees below average. There was also some smoke haze due to hazard reduction burns across the Illawarra and Greater Sydney today. 19 the top in Terry Hills and Cronulla, 21 in the city. But it felt more like 15 degrees for most of the day thanks to that wind chill. Across New South Wales, it was a cool and frosty morning, bringing a dusting of snow to the Alps as temperatures dipped to minus five. Most of the state enjoyed beautiful sunshine today, although top temperatures were several degrees below average, except in the far north. Tomorrow, a front will bring a burst of cold winds and showers to Tasmania, South Australia, Victoria and the southern New South Wales ranges, falling as light snow on the Alps, while troughs will continue to deliver heavy rain across tropical Queensland. Brisbane will be fine tomorrow, 26, dropping to freezing overnight in Canberra before a fine top of 15 degrees and a light shower or two for Melbourne. A cold start for inland and southern New South Wales 
Wales tomorrow, dipping to minus one in Wagga Wagga and Bathurst, zero in Mudgee and Dubbo. The few clouds near the Victorian border, but otherwise it will be sunny, heading for 19 degrees in Griffith and Dubbo, 22 the top for Newcastle. We can expect areas of smoke haze overnight and tomorrow morning, especially in the west as a result of those hazard reduction burns today. But otherwise, tomorrow will be clear and sunny with light to moderate southwesterly winds. We're heading for tops of 21 to 22 degrees across our west, which is three to four degrees cooler than average. A top of 20 on the way for Terry Hills and Cronulla, 23 degrees in the city. Let's take a look ahead and Friday and Saturday are looking beautiful. Blue skies and sunshine with tops of 23 degrees. And we could see some very light showers from Sunday through to this time next week, but it will only be a millimetre or two if anything. So staying mainly fine, those tops in the low 20s. Our west should stay dry, heading for 23 degrees on Friday and Saturday with sunny skies, a few clouds on Sunday, then partly cloudy conditions and tops of 21 to 23 degrees early next week. Those cool mornings sticking around, ranging from 7 to 12 degrees. Pete? Amber, thank you. Tracy is next with The Current Affair. That is Nine News for this Wednesday. I'm Peter Overton. I hope you have a good evening.